Shrink Wrap Radio number 312, Behaviorism and Spirituality, with Dr. William Baum. It's Shrink Wrap Radio. All the psychology you need to know and just enough to make it dangerous, it's all in your head. And now here's your host, Dr. Dave. My guest today is behavioral psychologist Dr. William M. Baum, and we'll be discussing his views on behaviorism and spirituality. I had been developing for quite some time but this a different view of behavior, uh, getting away from uh, the con- the constraining uh, assumptions that Skinner had been working with the discrete responses and discrete stimuli and uh, the contiguity between uh, the response and the reinforcer, all of that seemed to me to be much too limiting. And uh, I started thinking about behavior as being extended in time, and that seemed much more uh, natural to me and made it easy to talk about behavior in the in the everyday world as well as in the laboratory. So now I think of behavior as composed not of momentary responses, but of activities that uh, extend in time, that uh, take up time. You know, the, uh, the things that we do in the course of a day, you know, you get up and you do your morning activities, you eat breakfast, you, you know, all of these things take time and they're extended. And, uh, and then you maybe go to work and do various things at work. And uh, and that actually turns out to be quite uh, a good approach, I think. You can very naturally th- think about behavior as occurring in, in this very, very wide, if you like, possibly infinite context. And, and you know what? Uh, Alan Watts wrote an article about uh, Skinner in which uh, he argued that Skinner actually was a mystic, that uh, that his his writings were (laughs) mystical for this very reason. Interesting. I never encountered that. Do you you know uh, how Skinner reacted to that? To that charge? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, well, of course, well, Fred Skinner would, uh, of course, vigorously deny it. Uh, but I think that what uh, Watts had to say made a lot of sense. Yeah. Because he, you know, he, he pointed out that Skinner thought of uh, behavior as occurring in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, extended nexus that... Um, you know, might have no end and no beginning, you know. Well, when and how did you get drawn to Eastern spirituality? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This ties (laughs) back, actually, to what you were first asking me about uh, Fred Skinner. Uh, (laughs) Funnily enough, he actually was an instrument in uh, in my uh, coming to follow Meher Baba, uh, th- that's that's a, a, a rather surprising statement. <laughs> how did that come about? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's how it happened. I uh, I was um, uh, from from uh, high school days. Uh, I was fascinated by Eastern mysticism. I first came into contact with uh, Hinduism when I was 16, and uh, and I studied the Bhagavad Gita, read it over and over again, mm. and uh, and branched out, of course, to other things like Zen and Buddhism and uh, Theosophy, even. So uh, I was very interested in in uh, in what I would call uh, spiritual life, although back then I may not might not have called it that, and uh, I I. Uh, well, I was with my wife one day um, eating in a little restaurant and in Cambridge, and uh, the waiter was wearing a pendant with a picture on it, and I asked him, you know, who, who's that in the picture? And he told me, that's Meher Baba, and uh, you know, proceeded to talk for quite a while about it, and uh 
Uh, so I heard that name then, and uh, it was uh, some months after that. Fred Skinner had the habit of cleaning out his office of everything he wanted to get rid of about twice a year. And he would put this stuff out on the seminar room table, and anybody who was interested could take whatever they wanted. And uh, so uh, one day I was walking through the seminar room, and there was a set of Meher Baba's discourses. <laughs> and I noticed it, and then I thought, oh, Meher Baba, that's the guy that the waiter told me about. So, being curious, I picked them up, and I put them in my office on a shelf, and uh, uh, then sometime after that, I started reading uh, the discourses, and I was very, very drawn, and that, that's actually how I came to be a follower, or what we say, a lover of Meher Baba. Well, I asked, uh, I asked Fred some time later, uh, well, you know, how, how did you uh, find those discourses, you know?